So another special case of inheritance is called codominance. We talked about dominance as being strength and that we have certain genes that are stronger than others. In the case of codominance, we're looking at the fact that some genes have alleles that have um, equal strength to each other. So instead of just having a dominant and a recessive situation, we'll have a dominant, two dominant alleles that will be co-dominant with each other. And because they're co-dominant, when you have one of each, they give us um, an extra trait above and beyond our classic dominant and recessive um, that we can have pop up. So two examples. The first one is a really clear example that makes sense because it has to do with color. So we're going to talk about flowers. Um, now, flowers have three coloring alleles. We have red. We have white, which are both dominant. And then we have purple, which I'm drawing in blue. I'm real sorry, um, but I don't have a purple marker. So purple is recessive. Red is dominant. White is dominant. Purple is recessive. So if we only have white and purple, then that would mean that we would have, you know, just a classic case of dominant and a recessive. But here we get a little bit more complicated situation. So again, I'm going to draw my chromosomes, and here's my color gene. If I have two reds, then I get a red flower, right? Makes perfect sense. If I have a red and a purple, red is dominant to the purple, so it covers it up, and we get a red flower that hides that purple information. Um, so same situation. If I have two white alleles, then I will have a white flower, right? If I have a white and a purple, the white covers up the purple, bam. So I get a white flower that's hiding the purple information. If I want a purple flower, what do I have to have? That's right, two purple alleles because it's recessive and its information is always going to get put up. But if I get a red and a white allele, what happens? A codominant flower that has red and white patches because it has red and white alleles that are both dominant. In humans, this happens in our blood. So as a quick background on blood, red blood cells are the happy little inner tubes that float through our bloodstream. And there are two proteins that can exist on the outside of those blood cells, protein A and protein B. Now, if you have A's on the outside of your red blood cells, these proteins, and you have type A blood, if you have B's on the outside of your blood cells, guess what type you have? Type B blood. If you have nothing on the outside of your blood cells, we say type O because you have zero things on the outside, no proteins. But again, there's this curious trait that you could get an A and a B, and then you have type AB blood um, because you have A's and B's on the outside. So we see here that we have two proteins that can give us four combinations. Hashtag probability, hashtag smath. That's right. Always math in science. So we have three types of alleles that we use to describe what's going on with these traits. And these three alleles give us four types of blood. We have A, which is a capital, so guess what it is? Dominant, that's right. B is also a capital, so it's dominant. And O is a little O, he's just a little baby. He's recessive. So if you have two A's, you have type A. If you have an A and an O, then the A covers up the O because it's recessive, and you also have type A. You could have two B's, so you have type B. Uh, you could also have a B and an O. <laughs> and uh, that is type B because the B is dominant to the O. Now, if you have an A and a B, we get that in-between trait, that co-dominant trait of type AB blood. And lastly, the only way that we get O, our recessive trait, type O, is to have two recessive O alleles. All of the top ones are considered dominant forms of blood because we have type A, type B with our dominant and recessive situation. Then we have a co-dominant blood type, and finally a recessive blood type. So... When does this matter? Daily in your life, it really doesn't. Um, but if you ever have to have a transfusion because you get into an accident, you need blood from a donor, this gets real important real fast. 
So if you have type A blood, your body only wants A's. It will see any B proteins as an invader and attack those blood cells instead of trying to fix whatever your injury is. If you have type A, you can take anybody who has type A blood can give you blood. But you can also take O's because type O doesn't have anything on the outside. So it's not um, seen as a threat or an invader and the body will just take that type O blood right in. You can't take type, what do you think? That's right, type B blood or type AB blood because both of them have B proteins on the outside and the body is going to see all of those Bs as an invader attack that blood instead of um, fixing whatever the problem is. Because if you need a transfusion, you've usually been in an accident or had surgery, you've lost a lot of blood, so your body's got a lot of fixing to do and it stops doing that. We call the universal donor blood type O because these people have no proteins on the outside, so everybody's body just brings them on in and recognizes them as friendly helpers. Um, they can give blood to anybody, but they can only take type O. The universal recipient is type what? Yeah, AB. Because they have everything on the outside, so they can take A, they can take B, they can take AB, they can take O, they can take everything. Um, but they don't allow, or they can't give to anybody but type AB because um, they have so much stuff on the outside. So there you go. Blood, co-dominant, the end.